Here's a story that might surprise some of you a little bit. President Trump appears likely to win re-election next year according to three different economic models Moody's Analytics uses to measure presidential contests. Moody's modeling, which has only missed one presidential election excuse me, since 1980, found that Trump, who won by a 304 to 227 margin in the Electoral College in 2016, could easily surpass those results in 2020. The three different models showed Trump winning either 289, 332, or 351 votes in the Electoral College over his eventual opponent. The projections are based on how consumers feel about their financial situations, stock market gains achieved under Trump, and the prospects for unemployment. If the economy a year from now is, is the same as it is today, or roughly so, then the power of incumbency is strong and Trump's election odds are very good, particularly if Democrats aren't enthusiastic and don't get out to vote, Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics and co-author of the paper, told CNBC. Quote, it's about turnout. Now, that is a giant, giant, giant if. Like, oh, um, if the economy is in a similar situation that it is today, then he's very likely to win re-election. Yeah, but there's been the alarm bells have been going off for an extended period of time now because a downturn is expected. A, a relatively large, profound downturn is expected. So it that's a giant if. Like, oh, if that happens, then everything will be okay. Well, you could have said in 2006 the same thing. You could have said in 2006, like, well, if the economy remains as it is right now, then the Republicans are likely to win the election of 2008 as well, but that didn't happen. So, listen, man, as of right now, they're holding this thing together with duct tape, dog. I mean, the economy and anything could be the catalyst. I think our economy is largely a house of cards. So really, anything could be the catalyst, and then it's all bets are off, and there could be a giant plunge. We could look at a recession or even a depression. Um, but what do you expect? We have $1.5 trillion in student loan debt. We have over a trillion dollars in credit card debt. We have a totally unregulated derivatives market, multi-trillion dollar unregulated derivatives market. Um, we have Wall Street, which is, it went right back to their same old tricks that they were doing prior to 2008. We have a housing market, which is just a bubble that's been reinflated. Wages haven't really budged. They're still stagnant as they've been from the 1980s. You know, what do you think's going to happen? We can only keep this up so long. And then not to mention, you got a race to the bottom. We have outsourcing. We have automation. There's, we're in trouble. So I don't, I, I wouldn't take too much away from this story because this model has been wrong before and the model is saying if the economy stays as it is then Trump is in a good position but I feel everybody knew that if the economy went well no that's not true some Democrats are so blind they think no matter what Trump will lose but I think every reasonable person knew that bar a big crash he could still make his nonsense case and um, it is possible that he wins re-election and it's possible he wins over 300 electoral votes man but to me, the biggest factor other than the economy is, of course, who the Democratic nominee is. And they even say at the end, man, they say, particularly if Democrats aren't enthusiastic and don't get out to vote. It's about turnout. So you need a movement candidate. And the movement candidate is Bernie Sanders. That's why I've been so adamantly arguing in favor of Bernie is because I think he's our only sure thing to beat Trump. I think everybody else, it's a question. I think Elizabeth Warren is a coin flip. I think if it's um, Joe Biden, then Donald Trump is the favorite in that election. So if we nominate Bernie, I don't fear what this says at all. And I think even with the economy still as it is, Bernie would be Trump. But imagine the economy crashes and it's Bernie versus Trump. Bernie definitely wins. Um, but bottom line is, guys, and this is an important point. You cannot underestimate Trump. You cannot underestimate the Republicans at this point in time. Because you got to understand, nobody expected, well, that's not true, but over 90% of people thought Trump was going to lose. Maybe that's not true either. <laughs> I'm, I'm botching this. Bottom line is, the pollsters said there's an over 90% chance that Donald Trump 
um, loses the election, and the pollsters were dead wrong. They underestimated him then. I think they're underestimating him now. But I also think that um, it's a lot more nuanced and a lot more balanced than, than this report is leading on. Because if you look at some of the traditional economic indicators, yes, the economy is doing okay. But at, I've argued on the show for a long time, the traditional economic indicators are largely nonsense. The unemployment rate is really not the best measure of the economy. In fact, it's a pretty poor one. Because it's not even the actual unemployment rate. You basically double what the official unemployment rate is and you get the actual unemployment rate. So it's, it's about 8%. That's the actual unemployment rate. And then you got to include the people who are underemployed as well. And you got to look at wages which are stagnant. And they don't really take any of this stuff into account. They just look at the stock market and the unemployment rate and act like those are the two biggest things. Well, no. If the economy was really healthy, 78% of Americans wouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck. And they are. So, um, the thing to take away from this story is, don't underestimate him, he's still a real threat, okay? Don't get arrogant, don't get cocky. But also, don't be as resigned to him winning as this is leading on. Because I think that the way in which they're analyzing it is flawed, which is why they're not 100% with their prediction. Obviously, they got one election wrong in the modern era. So, I don't know which one that was, by the way, but it's a more nuanced picture, but take both things seriously. The prospect of his winning, you have of him winning, you have to take that seriously. And uh, you also have to fight really hard for Bernie because he's the closest thing to a sure thing as we'll ever get in an election. 